Hello guys, this is the Swatter Guy here, and welcome back to another behind the scenes video with the one, the one and only Eleva, who doesn't skip any scenes at all. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. <laughs> now, first of all, uh, not a lot of people familiar with you, so I would like you to introduce yourself into my community. What are you doing and what stuff did you make? Well, I am a Twitch streamer. I've been on Twitch for two years, a little bit more than two years. Um, I have been doing a lot of Sword War, but I've also been into variety streaming. So, you know, Battlefront, some Dragon Age, that kind of stuff. I'm a major Bioware fangirl. Um, <laughs> but I started with Sword War and it's always where my loyal viewer base has been. It's so. it's always gonna be like Star Wars: The Old Republic. Yeah. Like now, before we gonna go into like any other RPGs, I wanna stick into Swator, and I wanted to ask this: Why are you not skipping any scenes at all? Like, how did that come? Well, it's because I I am an RPGer. Um, for me, mm -hmm. it's all about the story driven, um, and why I also like other RPG games is it's all about the story. It's all about the music. It's about the character's creation and, and evolve mm. and the voice yeah. acting. It's it's all of these things. Oh, yes. So, and and it's just become like that. It, it wasn't even that to begin with when I started streaming, but mm -hmm. it's what it's been involved to because I am also a huge Star Wars fangirl. <laughs> and, and a lot of my followers are not only Sword War fans as well, they're also Star Wars fans. So it, it is these, this experience with the game that is the big thing. I, I can totally agree with this. Like, uh, not a lot of people seeing this, but uh, Eva is actually the only, like, I'm not going to say like the only girl, but the girl who has like into the lores and everything about Star Wars The Order of Like, I don't think there is any other people going into more lores than Eleva. So that is like impossible. I mean, maybe maybe some people doing it, no offense to anybody who's watching, but I think what she's doing in the lores and things like that is tremendous. Now, I wanted to ask you, when did you start playing Star Wars The Old Republic? I have been around since the first closed beta. I got uh, invited and I've played it ever since. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, then my question is, what was your first server and character that you played? I cannot remember what my first server was, because it was a light server. It was not heavy populated. Um, mm. I was not an MMO player. I was an mm. RP player. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't care about all the people to begin with. But then the server merges hit and uh, twice, and I ended up on the Red Eclipse. Oh, okay. But my first character was a Jedi Knight, a Guardian called Illyria, which I, of mm. course, lost in the server <laughs> merges as well. <laughs> popular name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It is a popular name. I mean, uh, you, I think you play it like a lot. I think you had like com accomplished all of the stories and all the, on all of the characters. Yes. Is that right? Yes. So my question is, uh, about the lore because you have been doing so much lore how did that come like why do you care so much about the lore and the lores about the game well it it comes down to the fact that i am a star wars fangirl and it comes down to that one of my favorite eras is the old republic era you know uh, i was i was on the scene when knights of the old republic came out and it just, it became one of those games that I could play over and over and over again. Oh, yes. I think it's also one of the only games where I would sit and play it like 36 hours straight with no sleep because it was just <laughs> so great. Um, <laughs> and this is just the expansion of that story. Uh, uh, the, the entire story with Revan and with the Emperor, especially. Oh, yeah. Well, like, 
we cannot like we can go into like really really big lores and details but just of you some of you who are not familiar with star wars the old republic or any like the game at all i will leave it to you because there is so much things to discover there like we can go on and on first off starting with the jedi knight and then the yeah. imperial agent storyline where we can go into like oh my god ridiculous <laughs> stuffs uh but you bring up so many memories uh right now what is your best like pick up some of the favorite memories that you had in star wars the old republic well one of my favorite um memories was actually quite early in the game uh, when i was starting to play with some people um i, I was playing mostly alone and i didn't know how to play it um <laughs> I, I really sucked at it but it was on a it was on a scoundrel before mm -hmm. I, I became, you know, serious about it. Yeah. Um, so I met this guy who helped me because I got kicked from a group because I was just so bad at it. <laughs> um, so he helped me out how to play it. And uh, he was playing a Jedi Knight at that time. And I was, um, mm -hmm. at that time, I was playing a lot of different characters at, at the same time. Um, so I was on the scoundrel. And he was getting close to the end of the game of that story and he invited me as a level 35 scoundrel along with him as a level 50 just to see the end story of the of the jedi knight story the oh. very very last fight yes but... first of all i was not supposed to be there <laughs> i died like <laughs> instantly if they even just looked at me i was dead um but it was just this of, of standing there and seeing this and it was like four in the morning, and, but it was just amazing because this that was my favorite storyline. And it was this great opportunity to be there ahead of time and see this. And back when the fight also was really difficult, mm -hmm. it's not anymore. But that is one of my fondest memories is when I saw that the first time. I, I think... Like, I have a similar opinion for that. Like, uh, just at the end of the, uh, the Jedi Knight story and when you, like, fighting Vitiate. And at the end, I didn't know what to do. I was level 49, close to 50, <laughs> and, I, and I done everything. Like, he literally kicked me and things like that until I realized I need to interrupt. He said, like, one of the persons <laughs> yes. told me, like, I need to interrupt that ability. And I was like, how to interrupt? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I literally don't know how to interrupt. And that's why uh, how I started to getting in, like, more on the, like, the MMO thing. Yeah. Uh, into the game. But I, I literally don't know too much. That The only thing I know is that I wanted to start with Jedi Knight because it was usually my favorite back in the day on a different game. But it was it was just so much so much fun. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite things to do in uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic? Because you are doing a lot of stuffs in Twitch and in in like gaming in general. Like, what is your favorite thing to do in Star Wars: The Old Republic? Um. Well, it's, it's difficult to to put in what is the favorite favorite because there is a. As you say, there's a lot of things I do like to do in this game. Um, for me, I love to do the story part, you know, the chapters especially. Oh, man, I love the chapters. But I actually do think one of my favorite things is the challenge. I love doing nim rating, but oh. I don't have a team for it. So I have not done it for like two years. I think uh, I'm, I'm going to afraid to say it. Unfortunately, you're late to that party. Like when back in the day you had so many people, then it was like so much fun or so much better to do uh, nightmare runs because I, I, I done it. I used to be an emulator. I I am I, I am also as well. Like I used to be uh, like. Not just a nim raider, but like uh, going for the world first. Yeah. So like a competition nim later, and uh, it was it was so much fun back in the day when yeah. you had sixteen players going in to finish the boss <laughs> as soon as we can, and then like out of three hundred guilds uh, yeah. for sixteen men, we are the first, and it was so much fun. But now, it's I don't know how it's, many. It's like, more difficult now. It's like you have settled team for it already, and and I lost mine two years ago 
You know, I, I, oh man, when we, after we killed Revan, mm -hmm. then people just started disappearing. So that is one of the reasons as well why I do a lot of story content during stream, because I had to change what I did on stream because I did not have enough people to do nim raiding with. Ah, okay. They all disappeared. Yeah, Got tired I had of the, it. <laughs> I had the same uh, when uh, Terror from Beyond came out. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, before between Terror from Beyond and Denova, that was like five or six months. There was like yeah. no operations at all, and that's where a lot of people started to disappear. After we done Denova hard mode, they said it's gonna be like. Uh, later later on when they're going to release nightmare mode before yeah. it actually released before like uh, or after tap from beyond came out so that was a little bit of weird so after we done like the nova 60 man hard mode we were so happy about it and then five months later a lot of people disappeared and then i wanted to bring up the guys back so let's just yeah. do since since a new operation came out let's go for the world first and let's go for everything i was so hyped for it <laughs> but unfortunately a lot of people are not come back only like we managed to get like a uh an eight man raid yeah. hard mode and we done like the first two bosses and the third one was like so difficult on hard mode we we just wanted to do like story and that was i think the last time when i done story with that guild after that we merged into another guild and then we do it 16 men again with that uh, with a different guild yeah so uh but for now nova days it is so much like difference to to be on the like especially finding nice persons as well yes. who are like or not just say nice but also like good and uh, those who are like i don't no offense to any of you but some persons are just can be good at this game like for example i can see it on pvp where there is some people doing stuff on one side or another, or literally just entering Hotball and don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can see it. And the same goes to, I think, PvE as well. well it is. I, I remember that I, I actually heard from some people that, you know, a, a lot of people have an, an issue with the PvP use because of the toxic community that can be in that. But yeah. when we were, then were talking about that, there were some people who actually said, well, they like PvP because they think that Nim Raiders are toxic. And it got me thinking back when I heard that, that it might actually be correct. You know, I've, I've been a Nim Raider for so long that I was an elitist and a little bit of a snob and didn't want to play with new people and so on. Mm -hmm. But where did it get me? I have no team. <laughs> I there, don't there's, understand. There's no reason to be all you're new you don't know anything i don't want to play with you instead of just maybe teaching them yeah exactly so we are all, that's we, what i'm trying to do <laughs> we all went into that way we all started yeah. as a noob so <laughs> why should we like ignore noobs and things like that where we can teach them but there is there is the, another issue where a lot of people just don't care about teaching other players and pretty much just like say screw you get out of here you suck yeah. that's all <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of times it heading that conversation. Uh, the next question is, you mentioned a lot of nightmare runs and you're so proud of that, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is your best accomplishments that you've done in SWAT or Like not achievement wise and things like that, but really you felt like that was so good. And I'm going to tell you that on my 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 friends and everything that I done that in Star Wars The Old Republic and I'm so proud of that. For me, my greatest achievement was to get the kill on Revan with a pup group. Really? Yes, I didn't get it with my guild. Uh, at that time, my guild was... Um, they'd actually just kicked me from the team. Um, oh. Because there was, there was a lot of things going on in my life. I was not as attentive as I should be. Um, so I got kicked from it and someone actually told me that I was not good enough for it. So I became stubborn and wanted to prove I definitely was good enough for it. So <laughs> I started hanging out with the guys on the Red Eclipse in a channel called the Narwhal Channel. Mm. Um, run by a guy called Nico Narwhal. Um, he was, you know, it was just assembling all the people from all the guilds 
who didn't have anything to do right now because it was the middle of the day maybe or because yeah. the guild was doing something else so we would do something and just pug each other and we just knew we at least have the achievement we we bound to at least know something <laughs> um so we did that and it became this race of killing Kuratani ahead of my guild which i didn't get they killed it before us but then it became the Revan, and i had I had just moved to Britain at that time and didn't have a job yet because of paperwork and all this kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So I had a lot of free time. And so did all of these guys from Narwhal. So we would sit between 8 and 14 hours maybe a day going wow. through Temple of Sacrifice and we killed Revan in three weeks. Wow, that yes. is a big accomplishment. It was. I, I, will, I will clap for that, to be perfectly honest. That it was, was so amazing. amazing. It was also what I started streaming with because we wanted proof that we had done it. <laughs> awesome. So that's how I got into it. <laughs> What what happened between like uh, the guild? Like you mentioned that you had to move and things like that, but it, you lost your guild or you you've been kicked out because of like uh, real life issues well, and things like that. There was there was some things happening. Um, I was moving to Britain at that time, and my life was a little bit of a mess, and. Um, but then something happened to my guildmaster. She had to go to the hospital and got uh, committed for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, so after that, our guild just dissolved slowly as well. So not Pretty only much- did my group kick me out, but then when she got hospitalized, they got me in. But then the guild still just dissolved because, you know, you always have to have the leader who rallies them all. And That's she was not there. <laughs> Such a shame. Like that is a sad story to be perfectly honest. I I I have never thought I I thought there was going to be like guilds in there and uh, of course there is going to be guys who are just changing MMOs or just going different places or just don't have the time and effort to play Star Wars the Old Republic. But I never thought it's going to be like this level <laughs> of like I don't know how should I say like not like a betrayal but something like that. Uh, my next question is, uh, it's kind of a weird one, but I wanted to ask, why did you stuck into Star Wars The Old Republic? Like, there is tons of MMOs there, tons, I, can, I can't name of, and I named it with Sam. So, why did you stuck into Star Wars The Old Republic? Well, it, it, did, it did come from the fact that it's Star Wars. Um, and that I had played Knights of the Old Republic and, and really loved those games, so when this got announced... I was super hyped for it. And I didn't think as much about the fact that it was an MMO. Ah, okay. And as I said, I was not an MMO player when I started this game. On the contrary, I mm-hmm. just, I actually just avoided playing with other people for at least six months in the game. Mm-hmm. But then ran into some people who were really nice and then I got into it and they taught me how to play the game and I became one of the first scoundrel healers in that guild. So it was wow. pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's how I got into it. So uh, did you like uh, tried other MMOs as well, but you still stuck into Star Wars The Old Republic, so it like felt like this yeah. is like home and everything. So every yeah. time I log in, it was it was home. I have I have tried Guild Wars Two, which I enjoy, yeah. but but it's not Star Wars. <laughs> I've also tried Wildstar as well. It's it's not Star Wars and Black Desert Online again. It's not Star Wars. It, I think it it is just the fact that it's Star Wars that binds me so much to this particular MMO mm-hmm. because a lot of people say that it's not even that great for an MMO compared to mm-hmm. others, but for me it is. For me it, it it's the universe in it that binds me to it. Indeed. I will totally agree with that. Uh, <laughs> the the universe and lore and everything just brought yes. me in like Star Wars The Old Republic. There is so much. I can literally say the same. I play Star Wars The Old Republic because this is the only Star Wars MMOs out there. Yeah. First of all, that is kind of true, but it was not back in the day. I don't know if you heard the, the Star Wars Galaxies game yeah, before. Yeah, but I never got into it myself. So. 
Okay, so you never got into it. I no. was a, a Star Wars Galaxy player. Like, I was play 2004 or 5-ish until it closed, like, yeah. because of Star Wars The Old Republic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, other than that, I, I am still enjoying Star Wars The Old Republic, and I never thought it's going to go, like, this big. A as soon as I started the game and enjoyed the the story and everything, I never thought it's going to be, like, this big of a universe. <laughs> like, thinking about... Uh, played at the first time and just enjoyed it as soon as you went into level 50 you went into eternity vault oh, war yeah. zones and whatever but now if you're comparing that mmo to this mmo like the upgraded star wars the old republic let's just yeah. say it's so different it is uh let's go for a little bit of curiosity here <laughs> if you could be in Keith position. So let's just say you're Keith. Mm. What would you change and what features did you bring into Star Wars The Old Republic? Oh, that's such a big question. I know. I know it is <laughs> a big question. That's why I'm curious about it. Um, oh man, what I would change? Yes. Well, there is you know for me it's, it's a lot of these small um like like quality of life things that could be nice to change you know that it's it's a lot of small stuff really um for example well one of them they're actually going to bring out now is this of bringing in currency for um for legacy instead which i find mm -hmm. incredible that they're finally doing um but I don't know, it, it would, it's such a big question. <laughs> I got you there, I <laughs> yeah, got you did. there. <laughs> um... So let's just go for like, uh, it, let's go for different topics. Would you change anything for PvP? Um, well, to be honest, I'm not the biggest PvP fan. Um, so I kind of maybe don't really care much about it. I would say that something that could be maybe be, be changed, it could be really good, would would maybe be some world PvP. Um, mm. Maybe also get, you know, ranked, it's only four at the moment. Uh, get something up for eight versus eight instead of four versus four. Uh, maybe even make the groups bigger than only eight versus eight in general. Maybe 16 mm. versus 16. Hmm. But again, I'm kind of up to that. But I, yeah, again, I don't know if PvP is up for it. It's just thoughts I've had. But again, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of PvP, so. But I wouldn't probably... care if it got changed or not. <laughs> <laughs> so you could be like Keith, and let's just go for a PvP session. Do we need class balance? No. Do we need any war zones? No. Do we need story? Yes, focus on the story. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to say I want to focus only on story because I think yeah, it's, yeah, it yeah. should be balanced. Like yeah. one of my favorite expansions is Shadow of Revan, not only because of the story, but also because it actually ended up with having flashpoints involved, but also ending up with operations. So oh, yeah. there was a little bit of all of it in there. It was, it was, I think, the best uh, expansion so yes. far. I, I think it, that uh, the chapters that we have now as well would have been magnificent if they ended up with boss fights, that Arkhan would have been an operation boss, and maybe Valen as well, and Valkorion. Oh, yes. That would have been a really great change, in my opinion. And a redeemable, well, a redeemable <laughs> Valen. <laughs> <laughs> you want a redeemable Valen, yeah. don't you? But well, I, you're not going to get it. No, no, now it's, now it's done. But yeah. I'm, I don't know. I think one thing that I would really, really love to change, and again, it's just said from a total PvE year's perspective, yeah. but I've always been very jealous about the fact that PvPers get rewards every season. I do oh. think it's fair enough to get it, but I just find it kind of unfair that they are the only faction that it does. What about Nim Raiders who work so hard for this and the thing they get is maybe a title for doing it on a timed run or a mount. But then again, I've also heard of some of these hardcore PvPers who get 
carry to get the mount. So it's not really that exclusive, uh, yeah. is it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you... Probably you played, since you're playing a lot. Uh, there was a time where they included rewards for Nim Raiders, but only once. I think I remember it right. It was on... Uh, Dread Fortress or Palace, I believe, yeah. when they announced the ESL competition. Yeah. And there was like a special title for it. Yes. If they'd done it in, in amount of time and yeah. my, in between. My guild team got that. I just missed it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I missed it as well. I don't have that. But again, but again, you can still then talk about it's just a title. Yeah. It's, a title, yeah, will be a show off. But again, if you see some of the rewards that PvP has got, like really cool armors, legacy armor, they've got some really cool weapons, some mounts and so on. What have Nim Raiders got? Not really anything. Well, at the end, only like decorations, I believe, or special mounts at the end of like the last boss. But again, the mounts uh, you can get by being carried. Yes, yes, that so is totally uh, right. It's not something that they have been working hard to get. And then it's because they've been working hard, they will get it. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's, I think that is a fair point. I'm I'm to be perfectly honest, I never thought this. Like, uh, I I can totally understand this. And you know what? I I will be on your point. This is totally right. I would love to get like a, a reward system, kind of if they done like let's just say a new let's just say the new boss fight came up for uh gods up from the sh from the machines and they managed to do it on like the first two days or in veteran or veteran mode and then they receive like uh, a special decoration so not just like uh what you can loot from the boss yeah. itself but but an actual like a total different one which is like exclusive only in the in a short period of time yeah that would be so awesome you know what that is an awesome idea Eva. i i will i will clap for that as well uh now i asked you about like pve and pvp but you mentioned also like quality of life and you mentioned about the legacy currencies what you know what keith has been like kind of like spoiled us now there has been a lot of rumors in the forums as well and in the community about the server mergers yes, and i wanted to I ask that. you is it going to happen or is it not what do you think about this I don't know. I know a lot of players would love it and it would probably be a good idea to make like mega servers um, for the population of some of the smaller servers. But at the same time, you also hear still about the people who complain about the fact that they don't have RPG servers still, for example, or yeah. that kind of stuff. And I think maybe, yeah, server merges would be good for big ones, but there should still be the possibility to have, for example, an RP server for people who want to do that. Yes. And maybe one that's a PvP server for people who only want to do that. Yeah, but it is difficult. It's a difficult one. Um, I think it could be a good idea, but I'm also one of those who don't really want to listen to rumors until it is confirmed by the team themselves we we are not like devs or things like that we are yeah. just we are just pretty much speculating what yeah. we always love to do speculating yeah. in the forums and things but like so that. so many people back when, for example when the manon stronghold came out yeah they have made the huge hint that it was going to be on manon with the ocean view yeah but since they had not confirmed that it was going to be Manon. I didn't. I kept saying, it sounds like it will be, but we do not know yet. And I yes. kept to that all along. We are still not sure because it's not confirmed because you hear about these rumors all the time and then all of a sudden nothing happens because it is rumors of what fans want. But that is not yeah. what they're working on. So I don't say anything specific until I've heard it directly from the team. And pretty much since we like, uh, just to know you guys, we are like, I know we are like influencers and we cannot say infos that is like allowed. 
but uh, we actually didn't know at all if it's going to be Manan no. or not until like the last weeks or things like that. So yeah. like pretty much the week after, it pretty much like almost announced. I think the day <laughs> after the 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 old Republic Twitter announced it's gonna be Manan. Yeah. So we actually didn't know it's going to be Manan as well. So just to just to clarify you guys, I, I know there is some like speculations and there is tons of data mines there, but we're not going to go into that because there's ridiculous stuff going around there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I wanted to ask you the final thing is what do you think right now currently at the Star Wars The Old Republic community? Because there has been a lot of influencers, including you, since you come in here uh, not so long ago, uh, the game perspective and something like that. So let's just go for like uh, influencers. What do you think about the current influencers right now? Um, I think the ones who's been invited and so on, there's, there's a good deal of diversity in them. Um, mm -hmm. And, and of course, a lot of people are maybe unsure of what influences are and what we can do and do we have influence and all of these things. But we are yep. all just, we all just people who have a community and therefore a voice and can then yep. help being just the middleman. Yes. We don't yes. really have any influence. And I would say that, that it's not like we're controlling what's going to happen. But we nope. all have a voice from the various things that we like to create. And mm -hmm. I would say the only thing that might be missing from the influencers is probably, it's going to hurt a little bit to say, but actually a pvp -er. We oh. are lacking a voice for someone who can talk for the PvP community. It is true, to be perfectly honest, because if you don't know who are the influencers or how many influencers we have or what is the influencer I, at all, you guys don't know it, Swatorista, I will tell you that. Check out what she made and she pretty much explains everything and what, what, what is the influencer program and who are the influencers. Check out her video. I will put it in the description and just check out what she done because she explains everything. and. But back to your point, you are right about it because comparing what we're seeing so far, we have like uh, story players, role players. There is Sam. <laughs> I could just say there is Sam. He can rent or do anything. What he can say about the cartel market or whatever. <laughs> uh, but pretty much there is there is no PvP -er who can say like that class balance is OP or that. PvP is not right. That is totally mm. right. I never yeah. thought this. Mo like most it... of us are what some people would call filthy casuals. Even I have yeah. become a filthy casual. <laughs> but but it's still that we we have actually someone like Chris Wars, like who know some people know as TC Thief. He is yeah. the Nim Raider. He has a voice for them. And yes. I can also yeah, I can also sit and talk about it, but since I don't do it as much, he's probably the better voice for it. Yes, we can pretty much like talk about the past, what has been done yeah. on operations. Like me and Eleva, we can talk about the past since we've done so many NIM raids. But for now, like for example, we cannot talk about like gods from the machines hard mode ish. No. Like I, I even did not done it as well. Like I, I done the story. Either. I've only done so, it on story mode. Yeah, me too. I only done it on story mode, and yeah. I did it. I did not actually try it on hard because I'm I'm lost interest for the hard modes now. But well, maybe I will try it soon. I would. I would. You know, for me, for what I'm trying to build right now, I'm I'm trying to build a friendly community for people who's never tried it before, for people mm -hmm. who might be unsure how to play it and has never tried operations, for example. I have a mm -hmm. lot of people in here who's never done it. Mm -hmm. And out of our team that's almost always there, we are two who are experienced. Me and my co-healer, who's also now tanking. Mm -hmm. And our, you know, the, the goal for this that I'm trying to build is still progression. 
It's yes. still what I like to do, but it's not, it's just starting over with new people who has to learn these things that for them hard mode is difficult. It is. Where for me, I don't really think about it because it's just automatic. But now I have to do it all over again with a new team and it's it's kind of exciting. But I would still not say I am the voice for NIM Raiders because that is not what I do anymore. We talked about the influencers of like the community. What do you think about the game community in general? Just take a comparison to what we had back in the day and what we have now. <sighs> I would say the games community in general, if I'm going to be really harsh, Mm-hmm. They are whiny little beats. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> bitches. Seriously. Yes. <laughs> they are they are all saying what I want, I want, I want and have no patience. There is way too many people who are in loud mouth and foul mouth and and has no room for anyone else and I I think yeah, now I'm going to sound like the filthy casual again and a total girl and I really don't care. But I think it's a shame because shouldn't we all be here because we like the game or because we like the lore or the universe or something and then everyone just sits and bitches at each other and I think it's really sad and it's gone really bad the last few few years. So back in the day the community was much better than now? It was not as harsh back when it started. There were the, you know, there were the raiders who came from World of Warcraft and so on, who came in, did their thing, okay, now there's yeah, nothing yeah, else, yeah, now yeah. we're going to buck off. But yeah. now everyone just sits in general chat on drum and cars or the fleet and sits and bitches about it. And it's just like, why? It, it, it if is... If you hate it, then leave. <laughs> <laughs> totally right. Like, if you don't have the patience or or anything about the game then just simply this is not your game or maybe just come back a few months later or see yeah. if this has changed like i can take a good example manan stronghold when it came out a lot of people wanted to have that stronghold like the community bagging pretty much for the manan stronghold yeah and when it came out it was like a mixed reaction. And I I expected to be like, oh my God, we got Manan, let's go. And then, oh my God, there is no hooks. Oh my God, the visuals are bad. Oh my God, there is like, it's too small. Why is it too small? Oh my God, why is it that much? And there is like what you said, the bitching coming out from the community. It yeah, is- instead of some constructive criticism instead. Yes. Like- you know, I love the Manon Stronghold. I think it's beautiful. But then again, Indeed. I'm also lucky enough to have a kick-ass PC to have it on the best settings ever. Mm-hmm. So maybe that can also be a reason. Mm, yeah, I that, don't know. That... But <laughs> it's it's still yeah, there are there are maybe some things in the stronghold that I could that I would love to change because I'm only at sixty nine percent on this one where all the others are at four, are at a hundred percent. So this one is a difficult stronghold for me to decorate. I mm-hmm. think it's tough. It is. But I would rather sit there, okay, let's figure out what is the problem, what could be done better, and then maybe send in some feedback and see if something could be changed instead of just sitting and bitching. So the Embarra Stronghold had some awesome information about it. Like you need to actually work and do efforts or like pretty much play the game yeah. to actually get that Stronghold instead of like buying it. What do you think of these changes so far? I think it's a good idea. It's it's a way to get people to engage more with the game and do some of the content um, instead of just saying, I have billions, I can spend it on whatever I want, but actually do yeah. something for it, unlock it, because it also gives the people who don't have that amount of credits a chance yeah. to get yes. it. Yes, yes, that is, that is totally right. If you just... Filling to understand, for example, there was tons of like titles and decorations and everything which you can work your ass off. Yeah. But to doing it on the stronghold, that is totally different. And they not ask too much. I believe it is now not confirmed yet. So when I'm saying it's not confirmed, but for now, it seems to be like doing 10 story modes, five veteran and two master modes or three master modes for the new flashpoint and this as i said this is not confirmed information okay i'm just speculating as well yeah and uh, 
what they done here for especially like master mode uh, i think they wanted to do be doing like a really like difficult one now like i don't oh, I don't need so. to be like uh don't need to be like a next blood hunt or the next or no, the, the blood hunt is actually kind of difficult one so let's go for a different <laughs> one let's go for like mandalorian raiders mandalorian mm. raiders is not that difficult to do but maybe this uh crisis on bar flashpoint is gonna be like on the next year what they done in the past like there was like How uh, lost island used to be yeah yeah yes pretty much like the yeah. when the k on and lost island came out that was like a tier two flashpoint and yeah. after that uh, uh, the the storyline with the force not the force alliance what is it called the the you know the whole the four forged? flash points yeah the yeah. forged alliance that one so pretty much they trying to build like new tiers of it which is really really nice you know i actually look forward to it and i also look forward to the fact that they are implementing that into the group finder that you yeah. actually have to have gear that is good enough for it Yes. Because you you sometimes do get into a puck where they just either they don't know what to do or their gear is simply just not good enough for it and mm -hmm. we can't pull it off and it's just a lot of waste of time and it ruins the experience. And I think this is why they're putting like tears and things like yes. that because they wanted to bring it to the next level instead of like saying like you have enough to like 236 gears or two two three three six or something like that like yeah. really really low gear to do with the bolster but maybe there this time there is going to be like no bolsters let's just go for 242 yeah, gear have to. yeah have to have the gear yeah exactly and this is why i'm really excited about this me too <laughs> and if i if you can go because the next roadmap is coming up really really soon like let's just go for like i think about the month or something like that yeah if you can speculate what you had on the forums and what you read from the forums so far what do you think it's gonna be or keith is gonna wrote into the next roadmap hopefully buffing the zork <laughs> <laughs> that's not gonna happen <laughs> No, that's just my personal wish. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I do think we're going to get some information on the next boss of the God mm -hmm. of the Machines. I don't think we're going to get some information on that. Um, hopefully getting some plans on what's going to happen soon. Um, I know that a lot of people are waiting for the, uh, the master mode version of those bosses. Mm -hmm. um, other than that I'm not really sure I have a tendency to not always read the forums that much because I, again I just think people are sitting and bitching too much <laughs> <laughs> so I always just wait for the roadmap and then just read what Keith is saying and then I just don't care about everyone's comments <laughs> That is totally <laughs> fine. That is totally fine. You're just reading the death tracker and that's yeah. all. You're not going to go into like the, I, the what I, do you guys think? Of it? I have to be honest that I actually don't care about the player's opinions because it's not their opinions that count as the devs opinions. <laughs> okay. I never heard this before. So that is glad. <laughs> no, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's just a lot of really um, annoying comments a lot so it's almost like reading reddit <laughs> so this I have a is the real to... side of believer ladies and gentlemen <laughs> what you're seeing on twitch it's a lie what you're seeing she she don't care about the community she doesn't care about anything at all she just want to have the stories and everything that's all <laughs> <laughs> Screw no, you guys. If, if people could, could write in in a constructive way, I would probably take more time for forums. But I just, most of the time, I just stumble upon all of these whiny types of comments. And I just, I just have no patience for it, to be honest. Yeah. I, I don't, don't worry. So sometimes I just read like uh, two or three pages of comments. And after that, oh my God, too much bitching. Get the yeah. hell out of here next one. <laughs> So yeah, I just I have to admit it. I just don't really have the time, or I can't be really bothered about it. <laughs> That's totally fine by me. I can understand that. So the next topic that I wanted to talk about is Twitch. Like the first question for me that bothered me: Why Twitch? 
why not YouTube? That is the first question that I really wanted to get an answer. Why did you like? I know you have a YouTube channel, which is like uh, Eleva Gaming. Those of you who don't know, she is doing highlights of her streams and stuff like that. Make sure to check it out. Also, it's in the, <laughs> the description down below. But uh, why are you not doing stuffs on YouTube? Um, well, partly it's because I don't have the patience for it. Um, partly because I'm I'm not that creative around it like a lot of other mm -hmm. people are um, and because I kind of like this feel with streaming that it's all here and now it's unpredictable and it's all about yeah. my immediate reaction to something like oh. um, I f you know when I started streaming and I started branching out and so on I um I played Alien Isolation, which is one of my favorite horror games. Oh, I had my never God. played it before. And <laughs> just this of, of how scared you are and and the reaction you get from certain things and so on, it is there is just something about it when it's streaming. It's something mm -hmm. you can't control and it is just going with the flow. So uh, you mentioned the Alien Isolation and that you started to play more games. So I wanted to ask, what games did you streamed only? So I'm not going to ask you like stream or games that you played, just only streamed that you started at the beginning. So not only Swotor, but others. Um, so I've been through Swotor, of course, which has been the on and off game for the, for the entire two years. Uh, yeah. I have streamed Alien Isolation. I have also been through Dead Space 1 and 2, which was a oh my horror God. experience. Oh, it is. Um, I have been through my favorite games of Deus Ex, mm -hmm. which was not so popular because I'm one of those stealthy players, really cautious, mm -hmm. uh, like to sneak up and then take them out without them seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always so great for Twitch, but it, I like playing that way. Um, mm -hmm. I played a lot of Battlefront on stream as well. Mm -hmm. um, been through Dishonored. Oh yes. Um, Thief as well, which it can be kind of scary as well. Um, Dragon Age. Of course, Bioware game. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I actually played the first two games on stream. Uh, because I'd never played them before, I started with Inquisition. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, because I'm I'm one of those who call me a graphics whore. <laughs> it's, it's all about the graphics. <laughs> it is not true. <laughs> I've also not. I've of course also played um, Star Wars: The Force Unleashed, both of them. Oh, okay. Um, Knights of the Old Republic. I started on, but then, um, then I had to take a break which happened right before you know, around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. um, my, yeah, my, my mom got cancer that time. So, uh, and I had to move at the same time and it was a lot of mess at that point. So I had to take a break mm -hmm. and then I got back and it became all about Star Wars Year Republic again. Nice. But yeah. pretty much you like uh, streaming only Star Wars The Old Republic now, right? Yeah, at the moment. Um, Mass Effect is also something I, I was streaming a lot right after I got back. Uh, multiplayer, mm -hmm. um, a huge Mass Effect fan as well. But but it's just right now it is exclusively Star Wars: The Old Republic. That is totally fair. That's why you become an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now the next thing that you mentioned, like so many. Uh, Twitch games that you played or just the games that you streamed on Twitch and you mainly doing Star Wars The Old Republic now on Twitch. Now, what is your favorite thing uh, during the stream time? So obviously communicating with the fans. You also now like reading fan fictions, I believe, or yeah. something like that. I do that occasionally, uh, yes. And also reading out the lures and stuff like stuff like that. So, what are like your favorite things during your streaming time? Oh, uh, my favorite thing is usually when something unexpected happens, like <laughs> like during a master mode flashpoint or a master mode up. Um, no, not even uprising chapter. Mm -hmm. We were on the Gemini. 
one where you know you are trying to get to the droid and mm -hmm. then there's there's uh, that big area it's, it's like a ring you have to run run around in and there's an exhaustion and if you you know hit that you get knocked back mm -hmm. and uh, in that situation i you know it disappeared okay so i run but mm -hmm. there was some server lag, so all of a sudden I got hit by it and I got so scared <laughs> that I just screamed at the camera got completely messed up. So it's usually something like that. It, it is this of of the unpredictable things that can happen. And you just sit there and, and you just look like a total fool and everyone <laughs> can have a laugh with it. <laughs> That's where the next topic is going to be. Since you brought up so many of these and I wanted to go in so much for this and this topic that you're doing a lot of times, fangirl activated. <laughs> Your reactions, what you're seeing is so amazing, by the way. But when, like, as you said, so many unpredictable stuff. Like, I remember... Watched like uh, watching your reactions about the Knights of the Eternal Throne trailer, like the the yes. not the yeah that trailer. Yes. And it was like at this moment at the end, like what? And 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 I was so laugh at this. And when when did this come from? Like when did this like reaction or the fangirl activated started to come up with you? Um, that started last year during Star Wars Celebration. Mm -hmm. um, the, there were trailers coming out after the celebration that we then uh, watched on stream together. It was for um, The Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. And we were just watching it together. So, like, yeah, it was basically I was just showing it off on stream because now it was out I wanted to see it but we're on stream okay you're gonna watch it with me <laughs> um, and I, I don't know I I think it's one of the reasons why it's going okay for me on stream is because I do have very strong reactions and I am not afraid to show them um, which sometimes could be a problem if I then get angry at someone <laughs> but <laughs> It's just it it all comes to that is it's just reactions and and yeah then someone said can you please highlight it because I didn't I didn't see it and then it just became a thing every time we watch a trailer every time there's a new thing we're waiting for and so on then we watch it together and it's it's about how I react to it because it's also how it's it it's become like this for, for my stream and why I I do have so many so many really good followers because. A lot of them got hooked on the fact of my reaction, even from Alien Isolations, that mm -hmm. I could I could sit under a table or in a locker for 20 minutes and not move a muscle, but just so scared. <laughs> and then I finally get out and move to the next place, and then I would sit and hide there for 20 minutes and just sit <laughs> completely mortified. And yeah, there's just... Uh Natural I will reaction. definitely watch that. I will definitely watch that Alien Isolation stream. What you is it still on your Twitch? I do have some highlights from it. Yes. Um, okay. They are also on my YouTube. Some of the okay. Old ones. Then I will. I, I will watch it there. It's uh, uh, what I heard from now. So on because I I have not watched it yet, but I will. I will watch it because it it seems to be now. It's so so fun <laughs> to see that. Well, one but, of one of the favorite ones from from some of the guys, especially from Massimus, is one time where I was... It was the first time I played Alien Isolation on Nightmare Mode, mm -hmm. which means that your tracker is broken, you don't have a map, and he is super oh sensitive, he will God. see you like nothing and hear you constantly and so on. So it's like, ugh, it was like the worst thing that could happen. But I was then trying to hack a, a door to get through and I knew what could happen. I, I mm. knew this point in the game, but so did Massimus and he <laughs> knew my reactions to certain things. So he made a two pound donation just as I was about to finish this stupid <laughs> hack. And I got so scared that I threatened his life on stream. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny like that is so funny um yeah i'm i'm speechless right now <laughs> that's so funny 
Now, I wanted to go like back into like what are your favorite things because you like what do you think or first of all, when did you start doing like uh, these reading out lures? Like when did this started to happen? Well, the lures was something I was doing because I couldn't read on stream. So mm. about a year ago, I had to stop the story time that I'm beginning again. Mm -hmm. um, back then, I was reading books, um, reading whole books uh, of one of my Star Wars books. If you can see behind me, these are, mm -hmm. yeah, that you can't see right now. But um, mm. it's all of the books I own from... You know, all Star Wars books. I have a few Mass Effect books and Deus Ex and so on as well, but it's mostly Star Wars what I own. So I would read that on stream like last 30 minutes because it's like a nice way to just calm down and you just sit and relax and people would just listen to the story that we all love and adore. Indeed. Um, and I do have some highlights for them as well because there were some funny moments in that. <laughs> but... Um, um, but yeah, I was, I was just reading that. But then I heard from one of my friends that I had to be careful because he had heard some people were getting banned for it. Oh, Switch. really? Yes, because of copyrights. Oh, okay. Yes. So I contacted Twitch and, and tried to hear them. What What is the deal here? Can I do mm -hmm. it or can I? And so on. And they said, you can read on Twitch. It's not a problem, but you have to have the correct right to do so. Oh, uh, okay. So I contacted uh, some of the publishers who all mm -hmm. directed my, me directly to, to LucasArts. Mm -hmm. Anything with Star Wars goes directly to them. And mm -hmm. I got told that, no, you cannot get these rights because so many people want them. And, well, let's just face it, you're not big enough for that. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So I could not read, but then I just started reading the lore uh, if I thought this this could be very interesting, so I would just read it. And and some people, not all of my followers like it. So they usually just mm -hmm. either lurk or they disappear. But some of them really enjoy me reading. So mm -hmm. I would just do it whenever I could. Um, for example, the the short story they came out with about the twins mm -hmm. before um, the chapters came out. I read that, for example. Um, mm -hmm. But then someone one day said that, how about fan fiction? Because that is not copyrighted, because that's fan fiction. It has nothing to do with LucasArts. Yes, it, it is, is right. all about your take on this universe. Mm -hmm. So did you did you wrote any fan fictions or you no. just pick some some that is really good? I, I don't I don't write anything at all. I'm not creative in that area. <laughs> But one of my followers knows Fibro Jedi, who is, mm -hmm. um, well, a lot of people probably know him on Twitter. Yeah. And uh, he does some fan fiction. So I contacted him and he said, yeah, that could be really cool that you would read some of my stuff on stream. So I did that and I highlight them as well so he can see them after stream. Mm -hmm. And I then asked about it uh, to Swartorista if she knew some. And she made a post on it on Reddit. And there's actually a lot of fan fiction writers out there who all is okay with the fact that I use this on Twitch. So that's how it came. So it's just a little bit of music, very low music, and just me reading a fan fiction novel and, and just relaxing for the last little bit of the stream. Could be like an ASMR sleeping night session with Eliva. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, but all, all seriousness, uh, I told her already, but you guys, I didn't tell. When I first started to watch like uh, Eliva streams, uh, she's doing like master mode uh, chapters, and then at some point she read out the lures behind one thing, and. I thought like, okay, let's just watch it listening. I started to click the follow because, you know, she's a labor. Like, if I'm not following him, her as an influencer, I will be punished. Uh, so, no, I'm joking. But later <laughs> on, uh, uh, I realized I started to listening to this. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into this. Like, I actually didn't know. So, I want to hear more. And I, I sit it up like this. And I was like, okay, let's read this out. And, okay. 
And that is so much fun. Like I, I, the first time I listened to that, it was so much fun. And I know a lot of times, and I will get into this question as well, uh, when you're getting interrupted <laughs> with like donations and then there yeah. is the spam with the www or the yeah, 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 or whatever's. Uh, I don't know how this called on Twitch when they like saying the actual word. And text to speech. Yeah, that one. Uh, so pretty much you sometimes disable that so you can read out the actual <laughs> uh, lore or fan fiction. But then there is like these moments that are actually laughable as well and made you like your streams and made you like a better person. In in general, this is my opinion about it. And I think this is so, so much fun. And I think none of us or at least I know nobody that doing something like this. So that is a huge shout out for you, Deleva, for that. Thank you. One of the things that you receive on Twitch uh, is like, I don't know if you receive like comments or anything on, I know you receive comments from the YouTube, but uh, you can receive like negative or positive feedbacks on Twitch as well, right? Yeah. So that is pretty much the same. I, so. I wanted to just remember and pick one of your best comments and the negative comments, what you had. So the best one and the worst comment that you had on Twitch. There, there's, for example, someone here who mm -hmm. wrote to me, uh, I also restarted playing Sword Art because of you and I stopped as well. Tell them, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> wanted it into to the feedback to to Eric when when we when influencers send feedback to them, and it's those kinds of comments that that makes me a little bit you know a little bit warm and fuzzy that that they enjoy being here and actually enjoy the fact that I play this game and want to be mm -hmm. part of it, and gives it a chance. Mm -hmm. And those kind of comments they they make it worth it. The yes. fact that, that you sit here and, and you play for hours and, and people just joining in and so on, it makes it worth it when you then get a comment like this. It, it has the same on, on YouTube as well. When you had so much effort putting into a video, like let's just say the previous one, what I did with Sam, so the behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, I put so much effort and work into it, like pretty much like worked like four days on that video. And I'm usually not doing that. I'm pretty much working one day in one video. But I worked four days on that. And after the comments and everything, what I had, on Twitter and everything, it, it just felt so, so good that they said, oh my God, you're putting really nice stuffs in there. And yeah. I did it like, like now I finally know Sam a little bit more than I usually know. So thank you so much for doing that. And I, it was so good. But I do, I do think, and it's no offense to any of my followers. I want to say that immediately because I, it's all of those who's there watching my stream every time. They are the ones who mm -hmm. make up the community, who makes up the stream. But I think there's one experience that tops them all. And that is when I got an email mm -hmm. from, um, from someone who was watching my stream. Mm -hmm. um, I, do, I do have an email for business inquiries and so on. And he then sent me an email and then told me he's, um, that he was a long time lurker. He really enjoyed my stream and mm -hmm. that he... Um, that he, he really enjoyed my reactions to the chapters mm -hmm. and that he wanted to add that um, he was one of the developers of these chapters. Oh my God, yes. really? So these rumors of people thinking that I get paid by Bioware because I'm an influencer, that's not true. It is, we are not it is because I got to talk to someone who just thought I had a good stream and we got to talk back and forth and actually become friend and he works at Bioware. Wow. By chance. And he he then wrote to me and we've gotten a good friendship and I enjoy the chats and, and he can he can tell me some inside knowledge of mm -hmm. how it was to create these chapters, for example, or some of these, you know areas that's been created and so on. And it's it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And it made my day when he wrote that message to me. The fact that just little me, who's not really a big streamer, you know, it's not like mm -hmm. I'm huge compared to the rest of Twitch streamers, but that 
that they actually enjoyed watching me play this game. That is that so was glad to hear it. That is so nice. That is one of the best stories I can hear outside the Sword that is related to Sword It's so nice. It was really amazing. Especially because he told me later on as well that my reaction to Chapter 9 of Knights of the Eternal Throne, mm -hmm. that final reaction, you know, against Valkorion, yes. that that was actually used at one of their meetings. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. That is amazing. So that, wow. You know, I just feel honored that they enjoy what I do with the game that they have created that that you know I just out of the blue got noticed. That is a big accomplishment for there. <laughs> that is so nice. Uh, so you mentioned like a lot of good comments here and some feedbacks for you. So let's pick up some like negative. What what you what you received on like so far? Like one of the let's just say pick one of your worst comments that you usually get on streams. Well, during streams, I don't really get negative comments at all. Not even afterwards either, because because of the way that my stream works how I perceive myself, how I, I try to carry myself, how my rules are in chat and how everyone else who is in the chat, mm -hmm. they also go by those rules. That means that if someone new comes in and tries his luck, then I can sit there and say to him, you know what, this is not match.com. If that's all you want, then you can leave. Mm -hmm. And then everyone will back it up as well because that is not what we are here for. We are here to yes. play. We're just here to hang out. We're here to have fun. Indeed. And if they're not up for that, then they can leave. So negative comments, I very, very rarely get. I can't even remember the last time I got that in stream. Um, what about YouTube then? Um, it's no, not that often either. It's, it's more spam I get. Oh, yeah. No, people uh, we, want to we say, getting... oh, you can use my music or can you follow me on Instagram? It's like, no. Or referral <laughs> code stuff. Oh, uh, referral code there, I'm harsh. <laughs> <laughs> no one put in their freaking referral codes in my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, now, but no, it, negative, I, I don't get much of, not on, that, on my streams. So glad to hear it. Like, you are one of the positive persons out there who's doing twitch and things like that on streams and everything so thank god you not receive any <laughs> negative at all and if you also re receive receive negative comments i'm gonna put like Le liam neeson here i will look for you i will find you and i will kill you <laughs> pretty much that's that uh now we talked about so many things, what we had on Fangirl, what we had your uh, in streams, what you played. I wanted to go back for the Fangirl Activated, one thing that I wanted to bring on, and you know what it is. Keith surprised you yes. when you got it. How did you felt in that time? Because nobody received, I believe, that surprise before so no, I don't what was so the either. what was your feelings and initial reaction to that well to begin with i was very confused because i hadn't i hadn't put in a ticket so mm -hmm. i was like what what do they want so i was a little bit nervous to begin with because i didn't want any personal information to be leaked on stream mm -hmm. so i i started out with this well i'm streaming so just so you know don't don't you know don't say anything about me, okay? Um, <laughs> but I was, I was just mostly confused. Um, my, my friend at Bioware had already given me a heads up that, that he was going to make sure that I would get some, get a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, he had not said how, what it was, or anything. He just asked me of some items I would love to get in the game, and if it was like whatever I wanted, what could it be? So I just gave him some. Let's just say I like I like gear, <laughs> I like the cosmetic <laughs> stuff, and it's all the expensive stuff, of course. Um, so you know, I I knew that he was working on something, but I didn't know what it was, mm -hmm. and I didn't connect it at that time that this had anything to do with it. So 
when he then wrote that well i was i was just um i was just told that i was supposed to give you something here um and i i of course write to him that oh i'm i'm on live stream so just just so you know i'm i'm on live stream oh okay well my neighbor keeps kenick and i just what are you <laughs> serious out of all people <laughs> so i i i can't really describe how it felt it was more like are, are you serious did you really get keith to do this of all <laughs> the people who said bioware <laughs> so. i think i think that is like uh it, it it pretty much like blew up all over the place yeah. and it, it was so much fun for me as well when i watched it it was like it was one of the things that i would say oh gosh i want to be on on eleva's position like be <laughs> like I, I wanted to get surprised by keith and let's just say hey you got uh let's just go for like you got the uh a sit recluse armor set enjoy and i was like what no it was the two left horde I know you got the two lock word, but like, yeah. I'm just bringing up an example. And it was like so amazing to watch that. But your initial reaction that is actually top fit as well. <laughs> like that was top notch. And I almost felt like you, like pretty much like you close to cry during that stream. That was so like crazy. Yeah, it, it, it was it, so unexpected and... You know, it, it's also this this little feeling. It, there, there was a little bit of fear in it as well, but it was, mm -hmm. it was more of this of I can't believe they're actually noticing me. You know, I'm not a partner streamer. I'm not anything big. I'm I'm just you know I'm just little me. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just a fangirl. It's, it's like I'm not really anything. And <laughs> and then to get noticed like that 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 is huge in it in is my it head. is huge. It is huge. Like compared to like other guys, people who are doing, I think that is one of the biggest accomplishments that you probably ever achieved. <laughs> well, and I, it... I was lucky enough to also get one of these t-shirts sent to me that you can't see at the moment, but it was from the last Cantina event. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've seen that, but... Is this the the like the ten or the forty celebration or whatever? I don't know which T-shirt was it. it I think it's, it's the last one where it's like the big logo in the middle and then all the symbols yeah, around yeah. it. Yeah, I yeah. got two of those T-shirts. One of them to wear. One of them signed by the entire Bioware team. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> okay, I'm I, starting I to getting it. jealous. I can show it here on the video. Okay, so you can just see it. But it's this t-shirt right here. I know you can't see it at the moment, but yeah. it has like Eric Moscow has signed it right here. And they have Drew Capassion right here. And Keith Kanick. And oh, Michael, wow. who is the my friend at Bioware, he signed it here. Ben Irving down here as well. So I was I was really lucky. <laughs> And but it's with all of this of, of you know that they've noticed me a little bit and so on and, and I am feeling extremely grateful is also with a little bit of fear. Mm -hmm. Because to be honest, I knew there were gonna be people who was gonna be jealous. Jealous. Yes. And people who would pick it apart, especially on Reddit. No, nah, I'm one of them. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm actually jealous, but, but in a good way. Like, thank God you got it, but gosh, I wanted to get that one as well. <laughs> like, but I it's know a... exactly how you feel. I, I, if it had been me watch some other, some other girl or boy getting this from, from the team at Bioware, I would also just sit there with that thought, who the hell is she that she's getting this? Yeah. What, 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 why is she getting this? Why am I not? You know, it's yeah. natural to think like that. And... And I completely understand. I really do. I'm like one of those super jealous people, but I just, I I just feel lucky. I really do, and especially because I never sorted out myself. It was not like I was hunting mm -hmm. the the attention from them. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just it's amazing. That's all I it can is. say. <laughs> 
It is. Like, I I cannot describe it anything more than this is just amazing. Like, you actually received not just one, but two awesome gifts from Bioware. So, that is amazing. Yeah. You. <laughs> uh, now, I wanted to ask you about other content creators that you, like, we usually have a lot of content creators, but I wanted to ask you specifically who do you watch or listen like what streams do you watching or youtubers or like uh, podcasters etc that you actually love to listen or watch well with the risk of insulting people i'm going to say that it's not on purpose but i am not the biggest podcast listener mm -hmm. um i i do listen to it here and there but not like every time um, and it's probably mostly because I I tend to join Otinicast from time to time. Mm -hmm. So Tio and Chill, and you know I always think that's fun to be a part of. But mm -hmm. it was not something I knew anything about until I joined them the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTubers. Um, well, I have a good relationship with Sam, uh, so I watch some of his stuff often um he's also begin you know started to stream a bit on twitch as well and testing that yeah. out um for cosmetic stuff it's waterista without a doubt yeah um but other than that it's, it's just to to watch here and there for other content creators what are they up to at the moment what mm -hmm. ideas are they juggling with and have they caught onto something that I haven't seen? Do they have mm -hmm. some good guys that I could maybe use and so on? Um, but I'm not very good at, at keeping to anyone specific. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's yeah. that's totally understandable. I, that... I, I am mostly on Twitch and that is where I watch mostly. Okay, then I will ask you a different, like similar but different uh, okay. thing that you obviously, okay, we watch other content creators like uh, Swater content creators, but what about like actually other streamers that you watch? Like mainly not focused on Swator, but you actually love to watch a certain amount of streamer or channel or, okay, you not mention we're not mentioning about podcasters, but do you have other than Swator favorite streamers slash YouTubers that you watch? Uh, you mean who does only Swator? No, who does not do Okay, who does not do uh, Okay. Doing other stuff than Swotor. Okay, well, I do have a few favorites that I really, really like. There is this girl who's called the Dragon Fini. She plays Mario Maker mostly. Mm -hmm. And again, because she has this really awesome community and she's always smiling and happy and, you know, she never rages at the game and, and everyone really? is friendly. Mm-hmm. And so it's enjoyable to be there. And I, I really like it. So, so it's a friendly community. It's a friendly community. That's what I like the most. It's when someone has a friendly community where you feel like you're welcome, but you it's also okay to just sit in the background. You don't mm -hmm. have to be super active because I'm like a major lurker. I watch it a lot <laughs> while I do other stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few friends who stream. Uh, a guy called Frozen, who I have followed almost as long as I've streamed myself. <laughs> uh, he is a very peculiar type. Um, he can play long hours of RimWorld, for example. And it's not a game that interests me at all. But for some reason, he just captures you and feels mm -hmm. like you're part of it. And, hmm. and he, he's just good at that. So you, you feel mm -hmm. also very welcome there. Also very friendly and PG friendly community, I might <laughs> add. Uh, you're not allowed to curse on his channel, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's, it's mostly like small streamers who's much smaller than me. Um, a guy called Chainsong Chaos, who is one of my personal friends as well. She lives in mm -hmm. the US. Um, I got to know her while she was playing Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. uh, she's on Mass Effect Andromeda at the moment. She oh, okay. is. Um, she's not super good at playing anything else but a soldier, but she tries. <laughs> <laughs> but she's just again, you know, there's a, she's interacting with everyone. She's 
she's trying to show an interest to people mm -hmm. and and you feel welcome that and... that's what mostly matters about community like uh yeah. if they build up a solid community behind that that you pretty much like openly welcomed there yeah that that's what makes a community like not i'm not gonna say special but really really good exactly so uh so that's what like streamers and youtubers in total that you mostly it's, watch is those i mostly watch yeah um okay. you know i i do tend to to also hang out with with people who play slaughter of course you know mm -hmm. sam there's uh, Averia and so on uh, but theirs is slaughter only um, mm -hmm. so you have automatically something in common that you can talk about Yes. And you know each other and so on, and you or know off each other at least. Um, but sometimes it's also just nice to be part of communities that has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. And and just feel welcome in a different way. And for me, yeah, I tend to go for streamers where it's a friendly community. This with people spamming and being all negative and... <laughs> All that kind of stuff, I just, I just can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't want to go into like, let's just say all they can say is F, 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 U, yes. F, U, F, U, F, U. Then I'm not going to go into that. Okay, exactly. next one. So yeah, that is perfectly fine. I think there's, there's only one streamer that I watch in where his language is a little bit, <clears throat> um, but his name is um, Angry Puck. He plays a lot of Dead by Daylight mm. and Friday the 13th. And he's really good at it. He's also like, super arrogant about it, <laughs> but he is, he can be so funny. Some of the things he says, some of the sounds he makes and so on, he can just be hilarious. Mm -hmm. And, and that you also just need sometimes just disconnect and just sit and laugh at what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Yeah. So we talked about Star Wars The Old Republic, we talked about your Twitch, but I didn't talk about, or we didn't talk about your past. So I wanted to ask you, how did you get into the gaming industry? So when was the first time that you actually played? What games did you play? Or what game or consoles or stuff like that did you have? Let's just start with uh, how did you get into the gaming? Okay, so when I was a kid, my dad had a really awful old PC with MS-DOS on it. Mm -hmm. Um and on this computer, there was this game called Jazz Jack Rapid. Oh my god! Yes! <laughs> that is one of my favorite games. It was my very first game. Uh, and I played that game for hours on hours on hours. So much that I would still be able to play the first course out without even looking at the screen. Including oh all the secret areas. <laughs> I, to be perfectly honest, my one of my games that I started to play as well is also Jazz Jack Rabbits. I think there was two episodes for that. I yes. played the second one, I believe. Oh, I played uh, the very old one, the MS DOS version. <laughs> oh my God! I actually didn't play the DOS version, but I played like the the upgraded version. Yeah. Let's just say. So like the where this well let's just say like I think I believe on Pentium Free PCs, I believe yeah, or something I think so, like that. Yes. It's, it's, it's a really old one now yeah. as well, but like compared to DOS ones, that's way but older. My, my dad got that really old PC, so yeah, so I, I started with that. <laughs> and uh, the next question, you started with PC, but when did, do you had any consoles back in the day? So let's start with the, the whole generation. What kind of uh, consoles did you have and just... Pick one or two games that you played the most in those consoles. Okay, so the easy question is, I have never grown up with consoles. I've only, really? only had PC, yes. I grew up in a family that did not have that much money. So uh -huh. we couldn't afford that kind of stuff. So my first console was about two years ago, right after I started streaming, and that was PlayStation 4. Holy cow! Yep. <laughs> that is a surprise. I, yeah, I, it was also very <laughs> awkward for me to start playing on consoles because I am so adept with mouse and keyboard. <laughs> and how do you enjoy playing consoles so far? Um, I would say to begin with, I got more frustrated than enjoyed it because for me, a controller does not feel natural in any way. 
Mm -hmm. um, it feels very awkward. But I got the um, I got the Battlefront PS4, uh, the one mm -hmm. with Darth Vader on it, mm -hmm. um, and I then got Battlefront with the console as well. And one day I just wanted to prove everyone on stream that I cannot play console, so I tried up Battlefront on my console. And I actually didn't die. I survived. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I started just trying it more and more. It's still not something I'm super comfortable with, but at least I can play on a console now. Now, there's one game uh, that I wanted to bring in, and I know you play this on PS4 because it's uh, an exclusive one. That is The Last of Us. Yes. I know you play that game. Yes. <laughs> so I wanted to bring up, I know that has a big influence for you. And what it, what other games did you play it on the current generation? Because this, these are the first consoles, yeah. the current generation of consoles that you played and had a big influence uh, influence for you. So, for example, like The Last of Us. Well, I I do I do have the PlayStation because of the exclusive games. Um, mm -hmm. I think that is the console that has the best exclusive. Um, I prefer Xbox over PlayStation. Actually, I own an really? Xbox One as well and a mm -hmm. Wii U. But I prefer Xbox because I like the system better and I like the controller better. I have an oh, Xbox okay. One Elite. Oh. Uh, one of those really good ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the exclusives for PlayStation is just better. Um, you have The Last of Us, you have Until Dawn, you have Beyond Two Souls. Um, you have some of those small games like, um, what, what are they called? Journey that kind of stuff and it, it, they are just magnificent games and they are all story driven you're not seeing it right now but i'm putting so many thumbs ups right now <laughs> because i am a ps4 owner and what i basically grew up as a playstation player so i okay. back in the day i had a a Nintendo as well, so I had a Nintendo 64, a super, no, actually a Super Nintendo I had, that's where I started to play uh, Super Mario, like the actual yeah. first Super Mario. Yeah, I played and... Super Mario on PC. <laughs> I actually did. <laughs> I did it as well, but it's so frustrating <laughs> now. Uh, but And then I also played uh, the Star Wars 6 game in that time, so the... What is it? I think the Star Wars, like, I think it's the original title with the movie as well. As soon as the movie came out, this uh, game came out as well. So it was like the Star Wars Episode Six, Return of the Jedi for Nintendo. Hmm. And it was so, so much fun. But after that, uh, my mom sold the, my Nintendo. I was super pissed off. <laughs> you cannot believe how I pissed off. But then she realized she needed to get something else but i i got a pc but i wasn't into pc that much i played like casual games like the the gym how, how is it called the gym war earthworm. yeah gym yes. earthward yeah that one and some go-kart games some uh, and the need for speed 2 yeah. <laughs> some like originals and then i got a playstation 1 and then I got my first love in that game. I Probably you heard it. It's called Crash Bandicoot. I hear a lot of people talk about it. <laughs> uh, it has a remastered version right now. Yeah, That's I, I've seen it on Twitch. <laughs> uh, and it's so fun. I Of course, I own the, the remastered version. And what you <laughs> said, like... Uh, uh, like on PS4 exclusive is just so much better. Yeah. Like it has so many. Like the Uncharted series is one of my favorites. Uh, Until Dawn, as you said. I have yeah. the Resident Evil 7 as well. I actually do as well, but I also have it for PC. <laughs> uh, uh, I have Until Dawn as well. well back then, I, I, when I got it when I just got my PlayStation 4 and I was not used to controllers for me. Every mm. time I was going to a place where there was like quick options hmm? i would sit with this control like okay circle square circle square <laughs> i should remember <laughs> where the buttons were <laughs> i just couldn't remember at all it was so wrong for me <laughs> that that is good <laughs> now <clears throat> oh my voice went down okay <clears throat> okay that's it now good hmm. so uh you are not really a console gamer, so no. then let's bring up some PC games. Since you were on the PC, 
what games did you play on PC that infected you the most? Well, I did, you know, I started with Jazz Jack Rabbit and I played both yep. of them as well. I also played a lot of Duke Nukem 3D. You are uh, becoming a lovable person right now, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> okay, go on, go on. Um, but I also remember at, at around that age, I saw the effect it had on my father of how much spent, time he spent on his PC. So I, I actually for a while did not touch PC mm -hmm. um, until I became a teenager again. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like the early years of, I was playing those old games and then I became a teenager and I started getting into it again. And I fell in love with RPG games. Mm -hmm. So I played a lot of um, uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, no, uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Knights of the Old Republic. Mm -hmm. uh, the first two of them, of course. Um, then the Force Unleashed games came out and I fell in love both <laughs> with the cost you know the system in it and mm -hmm. the story in it and of course sam Whitwer himself <laughs> <laughs> I, I had such a crush on him i actually met him last year at star wars celebration as well <laughs> that was nice. an amazing experience <laughs> and it was just he's just become that face for these games mm -hmm. and they had a huge impact on me because it was it was all about this story and you, you could really live out this extra little story in in this universe that mm. I loved so much. You know, I've I've been a Star Wars fan since before I was born. My mom <laughs> my mom watched Star Wars while she was pregnant with me. As soon as I could crawl, if I could hear it on TV, I would go to the TV and sit and watch. Okay. That's just how it was. I I have been I've been fed up with it, literally. <laughs> We're gonna go into that. Don't worry. We're gonna <laughs> go into the Star Wars thing. Don't worry. Now, uh, you mentioned so many RPG games, and I wanted to ask, why did you stuck into the RPG games? Like the like, uh, when I'm starting watching your streams, you literally and in the in your personal like facts. There is gonna be you are one of the biggest RPG fans out there. Why did you stuck into this like the RPG? There is comparison. There is like RTS games, FPS games, MMOs, third person games, so other. So why did you stuck into the RPG? Um, I think it's because I, I was never much to play with others. I've always grown up and been the loner because I was I was the weird kid. Um, mm -hmm. Especially because yeah, I loved playing on computer uh, I didn't like playing with other kids and so on so I was in general not really a fan of playing with others but an RPG it was just you and this story and you being pulled through this experience along with the game and you saw the story unraveling and and how it looked and you got to know the characters and so on and you, you got to feel for them mm -hmm. So it's it's how it began. It, it was the games that had the big impact was it was Mass Effect, the first Mass Effect. It was mm -hmm. Knights of the Old Republic, and Dragon Age Inquisition had a huge effect on me as well because it is just this it, that you you get to know them, indeed, and you get involved in it, and and it's all about the experience. Yes, indeed. That like literally why you can stuck into an rpg game this is why if you guys yeah. don't know it this is why all of the decisions all of the story what's going on and you actually getting involved and you make actually these decisions and it felt like a uh you can pretty much change the game or your game your perspective it's so good and that's yeah. why it's like rpg elements in it now uh Bring me up, other than RPG games, bring me free games that impacted you the most. Like, change your life or change your landscape and you want to tell it to your kids, your anybody, your family, that this game is awesome and why. Which is not an RPG? Yes. Oh, that's impossible. <laughs> I know, but there um, is some. Well... The easy one for me would be to go for Battlefront because mm -hmm. it's a shooter game, but it's also a Star Wars game. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so it's one of the reasons why I like that one. Um, it, I guess it depends on what you say is an RPG, you know, because the, I, I own a lot of games where you can discuss are they RPGs or are they something else. Like, like they are sex, they are story driven, but they are mm-hmm. first person shooters. Yes, that that is, for example, one of them. Yeah. That that has RPG elements, but it's like mixed with FPS, so it's yeah. FPS RPG ish. So if it's like that, if I can do it like that, then mm-hmm. one of the games that had a huge impact on me was Deus Ex: Human Revolution. That game mm-hmm. I have over three hundred hours in. I can speed run it. Oh, really? I know <laughs> the story in and out, and where all the secrets are. I love the game, and I love also the. What's it called? The moral dilemma mm-hmm. there is in this game. That had a huge effect on me. Did you play the, the previous Derek Sex games? No, not the old ones. Only Human Revolution and Mankind Divided. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love them. I, I played the previous ones, but uh, only the first one had a big impact for me. But I, I other... know the story in the old ones, but, mm-hmm. but I never got to play them. Because, I, again, I had a long break from PC... Uh, of playing because of yeah, because of my father so mm-hmm. for a long time i didn't want to touch it but then i mm-hmm. got into it again with the knights of the old republic nice so <laughs> i think everybody is going in like star wars the old republic now yeah. you mentioned so many star wars games yeah. bring me up some of the star wars games that you played that you mentioned star wars battlefront you mentioned knights of the old republic one and two obviously swator force unleashed what other Star Wars games did you play? Well, I played the original Battlefront as well. Um, okay. Not as much as I've done with the new one, but I have mm-hmm. played the old one as well. Of course, Dark Force. Uh, Dark oh, Forces, yes. Um, the Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, Republic Commando. Oh, yes. But I can't, unfortunately, I can't play a lot of these old games anymore because I have a really bad, um, a bad thing with motion sickness. Oh, Some okay. of these games, they trigger it like insane, where I will feel mm-hmm. nauseous when I play them. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that... so it kind of sucks, but, so I can't play the old ones anymore. I, I, I can totally understand that. Like, that is uh, not an issue for, like, a, an issue for a lot of people, but for me personally, it is. Sometimes it is. Like, for example, I tried... Last year, I tried to replay play Republic Mando, yeah. but then I got into Geonosis, and then I was like, uh, no, I don't <laughs> want to play it again. It was so much fun 10 years ago, or more than 10 years ago, but now it's just like, I, yeah, I, it's not... It's, it's also this, that if you take a break from it for a long time, you, you kind of have the nostalgia feeling about it, and I've always loved these games, but a lot of them mm-hmm. has not aged well. Yes. You know, yes. even even Knights of the Old Republic, as much as I love those games and have spent so many hours on them, they are getting very old now. Yes. Now, the next question is, you talked about so much about uh, your dad had a PC, but when did you actually have your first proper PC? So that is your own PC. Uh, that was when I turned 18. I bought my first laptop. Oh, for okay. Myself. And what was, like, uh, the configs for that laptop? Well, that was, oh, it was, like, well, nowadays it would have been a horrible one, but it was, it was an HP, it could play some of the games that I played at that time fine, um, but it was not a gaming PC. Oh, okay. I can't, I, I've, I can't even remember what... Um, what operating system it had on, but I put XP on myself at that mm-hmm. time because I didn't trust in <laughs> the other <laughs> systems at that time. Uh, then Windows 7 came out, and I, I had never had a problem ever since that. Mm-hmm. Uh, got 8 as well and 10, so yeah. But But that was my first one. My first gaming laptop was... Three years ago, before I moved to Britain, mm-hmm. so that was my first gaming laptop. It's an MSI. I still own it, actually. Um, but I think about five years ago, I started building my own uh, gaming PCs. Ah, uh, that's where we're going in now. 
Why do you love so much, like, building PCs? Why do you love customizing your PCs? That's, oh. that's like, I, I know there is some, like, other people loving, love doing these. So as soon as, like, new graphics card yeah. coming up, for example, the GeForce 1080, that was like, oh, I wanted to get it because it's so better, or yeah. so much better. But I, I never thought to to you mainly to have like such a like i'm not gonna say addiction but like similar to that but so, can i ask why yes why you didn't think that uh because i i never thought to like have a have a person like you like i watched you and you know i basically started to know your personality and I never thought your personality is going to be like this to like building PCs or or just uh it's it's for me I I and don't get me wrong this is not like uh comparing genders or things like that but I never see too many girls building PCs only 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 guys and I I I preferred doing it with with guys as well like as I said don't get me wrong but I I never thought I'm going to know a person who love building PCs that's what I wanted to say It's exactly because of that opinion right there that I love building it I love the fact that it surprises so many people Aha uh -huh. um, I have I've grown up I grew up uh, on the west coast of Denmark and mm -hmm. I did not grow up with a lot of money either. I was also the weird one in a very small school. I was not the typical girl. I always wanted to play, you know, in I wanted to climb trees and I wanted to play with cars. I, you know, all of the, I was I was like a tomboy, major tomboy. Mm -hmm. And it was very frowned upon for girls to play PC or computer games in, in general because it was not very girl-like. That was for boys. Mm -hmm. And so I've always been, you know, the weird one. <laughs> but You are not weird. Because of that as well, because it's not as common, it also means, unfortunately, I've also always had to prove myself because you know, you're just a girl. And, you know, I don't... I'm, without sounding really egocentric, I don't look like a typical nerdy girl. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I look quite average. You know, it's, mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people, they, they have this thing with girls, what do they know when it comes to PC, you know? They don't know anything. So I've always yeah. had to prove myself, both when it comes to my knowledge about hardware, about, even about the game, Sword Horror. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have this thing with girls, what do they know? They're yeah. just the ones you flirt with. And it's that, is just... a, that is a thing, by the way. Just continue, finish it. Yeah, is this a, a lot of people don't really want to acknowledge it, but there is a lot of sexism, and I don't want to call oh, yes. out sexism because I'm not one of those types, but I've just always had to prove myself. And this, mm -hmm. this of me being able to sit and talk to a guy about my PC that I put together myself and put all, chosen all the parts that I wanted into this PC. That way I can also say, you got nothing on me. I know what I'm talking about. You're probably doing more stuffs than I do, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm first of all, like, as I said, I, I did not expect it uh, to be like uh, this type of girl. <laughs> so you, you are surprising me now way more than I ex expected, but that's good. <laughs> and uh, the weird thing is, like this, uh, this had an issue with the past with the girls versus games. So that was like, why is a girl playing, for example, Counter Strike? Because it's a it's an FPS game, and it should yeah. be like a kind of an esport game ish. And and I was like, at the, at that time back in the day when I was yeah 13, 14 years old, and I played. Oh my God, a girl just defeated you! Ha ha ha! Screw yeah. you! But now, uh, yeah, 12. Uh, so yeah, pretty much uh, it happened. And uh, and then when I was grown up, grown up as a, as a like 12 years later, I can totally see now the difference that girls has 
more interest with yeah. with other variety of not just games but for feces as well so that is so so good to hear it well i i saw i saw actually something about it last year at e3 um it was not this summer it was last summer there was an interview with a few girls who was working for intel and they mm-hmm. were they were talking about this with girls and gaming because if you see mm-hmm. gaming nowadays it's actually quite 50 50 of girls and really? boys gaming but the problem is just when you talk gaming they talk everything including something like mobile games mm-hmm. and girls are probably more inclined to playing mobile games or yeah. rpgs like i am as well for example when we talk about competitive gaming like mm-hmm. esports there's actually not that many girls. That yeah. is still more of a boy thing to do. Yeah, esports is kind of a boy thing. Like uh, it is still extremely is still. competitive for boys compared to for girls. Yeah. But if a girl then is in there, she also becomes extremely competitive because she has other things to prove as well. Mm-hmm. And totally right. And it's just, it's just always been like that. You, you kind of want to say we live in a new age. It's, it's not like you know that it's only for boys anymore but there's still there's still something that will never I, really change i think i think it goes the same with uh, like mmos as well like yes. for example there is going to be like a girl who just going to hear your vo- uh, hear her voice for the first time for example when you're going p- pvp or raids yeah. and then you're going to realize oh it's a girl okay I, I, I still get some of these guys into my channel who's like Oh my god, it's a girl and she's playing Star Wars and she loves Star Wars. Oh my god, I'm in love. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You talk to my boyfriend about that first. <laughs> it's like, what's the big deal, you know? Yeah, it's I don't not understand. That uncommon, but I also think that a lot of girls have a tendency to hide a little bit because exactly because of this kind of reaction. It, yes. Yes, I can totally relate to that. Like my girlfriend, for example, are not opened as well. For example, when I done like started to play PS4 games, I had a microphone, and then I just asked her to like say something, whatever. It doesn't really yeah. matter if it's my Hungarian language or English, but she barely knows English, so yeah. let's just say just some Hungarian words. And she then started to talk English after that, and she started to talk to the guy because she was a girl. Yeah. But if I started to talk, then oh my god, fuck you, mute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, then pretty much the same happens with I think I believe everybody. So like, don't worry, I'm not gonna be like the first person uh, or one of the persons to say like, hey, this is Eliva here. Hello, how's it going, girl? <laughs> Hi, I'm pretty good. Can I get your number? No, I'm gonna get wrecked by his girl my boyfriend. So no, thank you. I will pass on that. <laughs> so yeah. Pretty much we, we are not tied. But I think we are getting to the point where this is going to be like balanced or at yeah. least changed in the future. So that will be that will be totally nice for especially you girls. <laughs> uh, my next question is going to be a little bit different, but I know you are a streamer and you are streaming a lot lately. So except Sundays, uh, but No, Saturdays before- and Sundays. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so yeah, thank God I know it. But before that, probably you not like you had jobs, you study, and things like that. So first of all, I would like wanted to ask, what would you wanted to study, and what jobs did you had before you started to stream? So I have been through you know normal school and so on. I have been through college as well. I also have an education in um, commercial uh, Mm -hmm. to be able to work in stores. And I am also an educated tailor. Oh, okay. Um, I have never got a job as a tailor, unfortunately, because it's not as common anymore to hire Mm -hmm. tailors for anything. Um, But I have been working in stores. A lot. I worked in something called Ilgiganten in Denmark, which mm-hmm. is the equivalent to PC World in UK, which mm-hmm. is electronics and all that kind of stuff. And oh, I worked there for for a few years, and I also became 
um, an entertainment manager. So I, I dealt with the department that had to do with gaming mm-hmm. and peripherals and PC parts and so on. Uh, that is so good. When I like. then moved to <laughs> when I moved to Britain, I got to work in game, which is a store f- that sells games, mm-hmm. uh, consoles, everything. Uh, where I worked in uh, two different ones in London. Did the the customers like not surprised at all? There was like a girl in a store. Mm, in in the one that I was in Denmark. It was, they were a little bit this with, it's a girl. They had a tendency to go to the guys. Mm-hmm. I was then working with some really cool guys who knew how to deal with this. So they would always say, I don't know anything. You should talk to her about that. And they would always look weird at me and then I could put them in their place. And that, would, that felt really great. Mm-hmm. Um, in game, they have a tendency to hire more girls because yeah, it is becoming more open about oh, that. Yeah. Um, but you will still get some of these young boys or, um, you know, like middle-aged guys, I would say as well, that has the tendency that you're a girl, Mm -hmm. you don't know anything and will (laughs) have a tendency to go to the guys, unless there's something they want, something specific Mm -hmm. where they think they can manipulate, then they go to the girls. Mm -hmm. So there will always be that kind of stuff. I I think there, there will be, I, I, Still in my country right now, I cannot see like too many uh, female workers working on like uh, PCs or games in general, but I can see more females working on like PC shops or just like uh, uh, PC softwares or anything in Mm. general instead of like the the gaming stuff. So for example, uh, we have like... uh, game similar to GameStop here yeah. as well but I I not see too much of a gir- girly workers there I I can only see it on the PC mm. uh softwares and whatever so that like the PC shops and things like that uh now the next question what I wanted to get is really really interesting for me and I wanted to go into your hobbies other than streaming and playing games because that is totally obvious <laughs> but there's four topics mainly that I wanted to go. So you mentioned it before, books. Yes. Sam has disappointed me that he didn't read a single Star Wars book. <laughs> Please tell me you at least read 10. Yes, I have. Thank God. At I, I own... See, Sam? See, Sam? This is how you can improve. Improve yourself. Stupid bastard <laughs> pleb nation. Okay, I love them. But other than that, tell me what books did you read? Oh man, now you have to, now I have to remember, because I own 78. Oh. So I have read uh, The Old Republic, Deceived, Revan, and Fail Alliance. I've read Star Wars Aftermath. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote, I've written, no, read Kenobi mm-hmm. and Lords of the Sith. I have read oh, okay. novelization of episode one, two, and three. The, the third is a trilogy. Mm-hmm. I have read the Bane trilogy, of course. Oh, yes. What about the Thrawn t- trilogy? Did the you have Thrawn, that? The Thrawn trilogy I've read as well. Okay. I'm just remembering if I've read all of them. Because there's a lot of them I'm working on still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's it. Oh, Knight Errant as well. Star Wars Knight Errant. I, I actually never heard of that one. Did you read about the the Republic Commando stuff? Like the Order 66? I yes, think that's I as a series. Them. I okay, own them. Thank, God. I, thank God I own them as well. <laughs> uh, that That is good. Like, what are other books that you read? Like, other than Star Wars books? Do you re- read any? Uh, not much. I've read one that's called The Robe which is like um, a novelization of what happened you know it's it's a fiction novelization of what (laughs) happened when jesus of nazareth nazareth Mm. got crucified Uh, Mm -hmm. it is seen from the perspective of one of the centurions who was part of executing him and it was quite interesting oh okay Um, okay nice nice 
Yeah, other but, than that, I'm I'm on one of the Mass Effect books as well at the moment. But nice, nice. I, I, I do I do read mostly Star Wars books. <laughs> I I never read the uh, the Mass Effect books, so that is that is good. <laughs> I, I will get into that, by the way, as soon as I can. Uh, the next one is music. What kind of music then you listen to? Um, it depends a lot. Um. It, it depends on what I need to use it for. While I'm working out, it has a tendency to be like dance music, uh, mostly Latina inspired. Um, mm -hmm. I used to uh, dance as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I enjoy mostly classical, actually. Classical, so, you mean like Queen? In, no, classical as in piano and oh, okay. violins and everything. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, the, in general, like Mozart, Beethoven, that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, okay. I actually enjoy that a lot because it's something you can have in the background and it doesn't distract you while you're reading. Mm -hmm. Because when you're listening to music, if there's text on, you have a tendency to listen to what they're saying. I, I can totally relate to this yeah. because my uh, big brother is listen to these kind of musics as well so every time when i when we have like a christmas meeting and things like that they're not putting christmas songs they put in Be beethoven and everything yeah. in there so i i can relate to this i just enjoy it much much more when i sit and read for example ah uh, okay yeah okay. <laughs> the next one is movies what kind of movies that you watch um uh, mostly science fiction oh for example well, I, funny enough, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Um, okay, that that's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a huge fan of the Alien franchise and Predator. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, just science fiction, something that you don't have to relate to, but it's just good entertainment. You know, like one of my favorite movies as well is um, The Fifth Element. Oh yes, yes. Uh, like the the Bruce by, Willis one, I believe, yes, with, with yeah. Besson. yeah. And um, you know those kinds of science fiction movies, even Aeon Flux, which a lot of people hate. I thought it was, I thought it was good. It's a good science fiction movie. Including myself, I hated that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what about like uh, science fiction? Like, let's just go for like, what about uh, is the Marvels are in this and the DC movies as well? No. Or no. Okay. I, I can watch a superhero movie. It can be good entertainment. Like, for example, uh, some of the X-Men movies I, I quite enjoy. But I am not a Marvel or DC fan. Okay. I can, I can watch them, but it's not something where I'm saying, oh, I want to watch the next one. Okay. I, I'm not the hugest super fan. Or okay. superhero fan. <laughs> ah, okay. That, that's fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Uh, the last one is TV shows. What TV shows that you watch? Um, too many. <laughs> just pick like, let's just go for seven. Well, I, of or course, your favorite. Like, I of course love Star Wars: The Republic. No, Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Uh, Star yeah. Wars: Rebels. Yeah. Um, Game of Thrones, The Walking Dead. Um, I love uh, House MD. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, yeah. Criminal Minds, I really love as well. Oh, my my mom really loved that as well. I I, uh, I, I don't know if that's an insult. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't worry, that is not an insult. But that means my uh, I I sometimes going into my mom's place and usually she watches that all the time. And sometimes <laughs> well, I'm getting I, into like that was a kind of nice episode and I well, watched it. it so I, I, good. I really enjoy them. You know, Criminal Minds and and the last two would be Lie to Me and The Mentalist because all <laughs> those three has something to do with human behavior. It's all about why are people reacting to certain things? Mm. What makes them triggered to certain things? How can you read them? And so on and so on. And I yeah. find that very, very interesting. Uh, and probably you not watched it and probably you're going to hate me for this. And please don't. <laughs> but I am one of the persons that in case you missed it last time that I have not watched any episodes of the Game of Thrones yet. I don't know anything about it. I won't I, spoil. 
I know the winter is coming, that's all, and I know there is snow in there and things like that. I know some of the characters, I know there is sex, a lot of sex in there and killing. Yes. Main characters, mainly. Yeah. So I know those, but particularly Sam has been so pissed out that I needed to cut the interview because, like, he <laughs> moved me to the channel so many times because of that. Like, <laughs> He was super mad about it. But other than that, I only watched The, the Walking Dead and the movie or TV show called Supernatural. I don't know mm. if you... I, I know of it, yes. So, yeah, those are the mainly two. And House of Cards, yeah, that one. Uh, but, yeah, let's go into, like, hobbies that you're doing other than... Uh, we talked about books, movies, uh, music, and TV show. You mentioned dancing. That is mm. like one of kind of your hobbies back in the day. What kind of hobbies did you have back in the day? Well, I've always been very happy about, you know, about dancing mostly. I'm, I've even gotten something as girly as ju uh, Just Dance uh, from a <laughs> PlayStation just to help with workout. Um, uh, I do, I did back in the day as well, enjoy a lot of drawing and sewing. Uh, mm -hmm. but I've not done it for a long time, but um, I would really like to get into cosplay. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I saw it so on stream. It's so expensive. <laughs> I know, I know. But I would, I would, that, would, that I would really love to do. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, in general, I just, I never feel like I have enough time for hobbies. <laughs> so... I wanted to bring you, because I know I cannot see the background right now, So, but for now, bring me some of your favorite Star Wars reliquies that you got in the background. Mm. Or that you have proud. And just show it to us. Yeah, just give me a sec. There we go. So, two things I have here that I know a lot of people think is really exciting is I have the book... Of Sith and the Jedi mm -hmm. Path, which is the two books that's like instruction of how to become a Sith and how to become a Jedi. Mm -hmm. um, they're pretty cool. I got them at my last work in game. They had them on sale, and it mm -hmm. looks like journals mm -hmm. with with like you know inscriptions in the marking and so on. And they're pretty cool. Um, then I have a gentle giant statue of Darth Malak. Wow. Yep. I wanted to see that. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit dusty, unfortunately, so just ignore that. But I got that from my previous roommate. He bought this to me. Um, that looks really cool with some really nice details as well with the lightsaber and even a mask that you can pull off. Mm -hmm. So you can, so you can actually see him without the jaw. So that's, that's a pretty cool detail. Nice. Um, and then the last thing I brought over as well was another gentle giant statue, which is of Darth Malgus from the collector's edition of Star Wars. I got that as well. Yeah. Thank God. That is, at least someone bought the collector's edition with me. I that. was actually really lucky to get that one because when I bought it, uh, or when I was looking for it, they were all sold out mm -hmm. and I couldn't get it. But then I was lucky enough that one day when I double checked in, um, in an online shop for game, which was in the mm -hmm. UK and I was living in Denmark at that point, um, there was someone who had just returned their purchase. So I mm -hmm. got the very last collector's edition. <laughs> <laughs> so you I got was, the very last collector's edition. I got the edition. very last one. <laughs> I was so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> that is nice. That yeah. is. I I got the very first one, by the way, in that nice. in that uh, particular. But the the sad thing is, uh, the the soundtrack CD has been stolen from it. I oh, don't have that, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah. Now let's go on before we wrap up some rapid fire questions. So these are going to be quick and I wanted to give like uh, some of the things that you have done or just pick your favorite moments or things that I wanted to br bring in. For example, what is your favorite story? Jedi Knight. Nice. 
<laughs> mine too. Mine too. <laughs> okay, with the Imperial Agent as well. Like, I cannot compare the two. Okay. Favorite class? Um, sorcerer or Sage. Okay. I, I play mostly Sorcerer. I, I play my Jedi Knight. <laughs> Favorite planet? Boss. Boss? Mm-hmm. How is that? Okay, wait. The well, how entire is that? planet is mystical and infueled with the Force. Okay, never heard that before. Good, good. Okay, okay, that is unexpected. Okay, next one. <laughs> Dark or light side? Light. Thank God. <laughs> uh, co-op or solo? Uh, Tough solo. one for you. Yeah, okay. I would probably say solo. Okay. If I could do everything solo, I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> Best achievement that you have got in Star Wars The Old Republic? The Wings of the Architect. Okay. Favorite item that you have in Star Wars The Old Republic? Okay, I want to change mine. <laughs> 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 then my best achievement my best achievement is the ribbon chest title okay. my my best item is the wings of the architect <laughs> okay, fair enough best donation on twitch that was from darje when he just all of a sudden wanted to be on my top 10 and donated almost a thousand pounds in one go my god that was ridiculous and the yeah. final one when are you gonna do if Keith surprise you another gift? <laughs> Smile, laugh. <laughs> Doing a crazy reaction and everything. Probably the same as the first time. <laughs> Every time he stops by the stream, I get all weird by it. <laughs> yes, he's, okay. been, he's been by the stream several times. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that, so thank God. That, that's cool, by the way, that's cool. It's nice. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this little, as I said, talking session. I'm not going to call this a podcast. I'm not going to call this like uh, pretty much like uh, talking like how should I uh, describe this? Like we talk, talk so many stuffs, but this is like behind the scenes. These are like some things that you don't know about Eleva or formerly no Eleva Gaming. So again, Eva, thank you so much for joining this. It was so much fun to doing this. It was it, it was kind of an unexpected for me to like actually if you guys didn't know, this was the actually the first time when we talked. Yeah. So it was so much fun to doing this. Any last words that you wanted to say? No, I I think you Everything has been said. There were some really good questions, and I think we covered a lot of ground. <laughs> yeah, I think so as well. I hope you guys did enjoy it. As I mentioned it a lot of times, check out Eleva. The Twitch and YouTube channel is going to be on the description. I hope you guys did enjoy it. And let me know in the comment section below who do you guys want to see next in the behind the scenes. I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.